Eight months ago, these young men and women began a journey to become police officers. They've told me I'm a bit young and it's going to be a big shock. It's time to let him find his life. I'm finally here and I'm excited to get into it, really. We're going to be pushing them to do things that they never realised they could do. Suck it up, princess! After eight of the toughest months in their lives... Police, don't move! You guys have to go out there and work with my mates. If you're not tough enough, you shouldn't be in the job. Put your hand on your head and get back! They've earned their place in the force. Now, it's time to hit the streets. Get on there, mate. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Is it <laughs> Get on your ass. It does worry me some of the things I'm going to see out here. Three victims, two of which have both laughed. How many fears older than him? I like you. One eight urgent, another fight outside Porky's. Oh, man, I was then I'm drunk, so I'm Oh, my God. It's like we're not in Kansas anymore. After eight months at college, Australia's newest police are about to begin their very first shifts on the beat. The people from Bankstown are definitely tough. They've got a different, you know, outlook on police, so I'm going to have to be assertive and get my point across and, you know, do the job as best I can. Yeah, I'm in the real world now and I'm not nervous at all. Like, it's, it's exciting, if anything. Yeah, a little bit tense about what to expect and if I'll be able to switch into gear and remember what to do. Watch out. Watch the street, mate. You're missing out. Woo! Former lawyer Alex is on her first patrol of Sydney's Party Central, Oxford Street. Hi, Mum. The nightclub is dressed to impress, but it's Alex's outfit that's getting noticed. People staring at you. It's very strange. Let the refugees in. All right? Let the refugees into our country. You agree with me. Do you want to have sex? Away from the bright lights, the inner city quickly loses its luster. Yeah, this is a world away from Goulburn. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this before. Sorry about the smell. Yeah, it's not a nice smell in here. Yeah, no. Give you the hot tip. <laughs> so this is D block here. Probationary police must patrol three yeah, up for their first six down weeks. Down. Tonight, constables Haggy and Falzon introduce Alex to one of the local trouble spots. See? You got a pretty good view up here. There's a lot of good people who live here. The boss likes to say it's an 80 20 rule. 20% 20 are crooks yeah. and commit 80% of the problem. Whereas 80% are good. Yeah. And so they get tarnished with Something. everyone else. This is far from the upbringing I've had. I feel like a sport brat right now. I see how these people are living. Um, if it means that they, those 80% are the good people that live here get to feel a bit safer because we're walking around, then I'll walk through a million times if I have to. Far out. Across town, Kyle starts his first shift at Manly LAC. Go. He's just moved from the sleepy north coast and is about to discover what Friday night policing in Manly is all about. This is where you know, he's a police member down this road. On the back street. Ah, okay. Like this guy. That's what we're going to stop him. But as Kyle's patrol pulls over the car, a far more urgent call comes in. There's been an assault nearby. Two males have fled the scene on foot. Yeah, that's Manly 16, we've got them, they're on Whistle Street. Where were they, Cass? They were down that way. Well, they were definitely on this block yeah. up on our left. Yeah, 
on someone's fence. It's really annoying. Just uh, jump on. Just let him know that I like that my money turned around to talk to him. Family 16. Your radio, uh, the, the pair wasn't collected. Um, we can't locate them. After 10 minutes, the search is called off. I don't like losing people. Oh. Police chase down a man suspected of being involved in a brawl. Bring it round. Bring this one down. Go, turn around. It's Kyle's first arrest. Come out at the moment. So you're, not, you're under arrest for an assault. The funny thing is that I haven't even done anything. Why'd you run if you haven't done anything? Because it's funny to me to run from you guys. But you got caught. Yeah, you put up a good chase. Couldn't find him for about 10 minutes and then um, we are just cruising up the road then and we seen two blokes and we stopped and they looked around and he started running and it was on and then we ran through the backyard and got him at the back fence and yeah, it feels good. It's good fun. Should have stretched up, but. <laughs> Mitch's first shift is tomorrow morning. Tonight, he's checking out his new beat, Sydney's King's Cross. It's the first time he's been to the notorious red light district. Big eye opener. Can't get over how many strip joints there are here. Back at police college, Mitch was warned what to expect. You will be assaulted in the first 12 months of your station at King's Cross. Are you ready for that? At 6 a.m., ready or not, Mitch will walk out as a police officer in one of Australia's toughest beats. Now that day has come. Try and get in the habit of knowing where you are, even though you don't know, um, don't know the area. You yep. try and get a general idea of um, where you are. This is a real deal out here now, so uh, excited to start really. For the former builder, the learning curve is about to get much steeper. Hey, baby. You look a bit lost. A bit lost. Yeah. Get out? No. I'm seen Gemma, that. Tony Record. Your girls took a photo of me and it should be in your locker room somewhere. All right, I'll look out for it. Oh, yeah. One like that. All right, I'll look out. My dress out the line. Oh, <laughs> I'll look out for hey, it. Hey, Gem, I like you. The woman's not familiar, so they decide to find out a bit more about her. Hey, I haven't seen you here before. Why, well, you usually approach people you don't see here. Yeah, I... I'm interested to know who you are. Do you want to get out your little ID for us? What are you, what are you hanging around Springfield Mall for? This is embarrassing. See what they're doing to a celebrity here. Are you a drug user? Is there any uncapped ones in there? What are the syringes in your bag for? They're for the children around here. Do you mind if we have a look in the bag? Look in the bag. Just um, grab the bag. Really unheard for. Just going to bring it over to this seat here, if you don't mind. But just bear in mind, there's used fits in there. There could be uncapped syringes. Important thing is not to get a needle stick injury. Yeah. So what are you doing here? I've come down here for, with a friend. Well, given that you've got needles in there, right, it gives me the thought that you might be here to get some drugs. I don't want you here. We're just giving her a move along direction out of the city because we think she's here to score drugs. I haven't seen anyone of a character like this before in my life. Uh, definitely um, not not a dull job to come to. Further west in Sydney's Bankstown, 19-year-old Frankie begins his new life as a police officer. I'm a little bit nervous about the radio, so, yeah, I just got to make sure I say Bankstown and not Rossiville. 
His patrol has been called to an accident outside a local high school. Watch out for this car. The driver has fled the scene, but witnesses tell the story. What's going on? Two cars or? This car? Oh, yep. Was going too fast, spun around, flipped his car. Hit that car there. The accident happened just before school came out. Minutes later, and there could have been a tragedy. You can see his burnout started there. It's come back down through this other car here. Bashed off here and he's ended up there. So that's one continuous skid mark. So what we'll do is we'll take some photos of those. As Frankie documents what happened, the driver wisely decides to return to the accident scene. It was like I was coming down, but there was a car in front of me going slower. So I slammed my brakes and they weren't enough. So I had to pull the handbrake up. This kid's born in 93, so he would have been 17. And I'm 19, so I'm only a few years older than him. It's a pretty dumb thing what you've been doing, right? Yeah, Imagine if there was a kid crossing the road, far worse. Yeah. All right? Confiscating your learner's driver's license as a result of you being unsupervised. You understand that? Yes, sir. Well, likely, as a result, you'll get a ticket for probably neg driving and then you'll lose your, you're going to have your license suspended. I think that's for three months. So you get a ticket for neg driving because this could have killed someone. Yes, sir. Thanks for your time. Thank you for coming back, all right, Abdul? It could be far worse. Okay? The whole day's been interesting. I've enjoyed every bit of it. I mean, the police are great, and it just really reaffirms what I want to do. And yeah, I could really see myself doing this. Thanks, the one five back on from the accident. Thank you, one five. Thank you. Off we go. On Sydney's northern beaches, former event organizer Mika is on her first patrol. She grew up here but is now experiencing her suburb on the other side of the fence. I'm going to try and pull a car over and you can do the um, breath test if you want. You got the alcohol there? Yeah. Mika is with constables Chris Papalo and Jake Ashley. They're on the lookout for drunk drivers. Come on, Mika. Tells me could be, could be. The car ahead could is being driven be. with exaggerated caution. Yeah, could yes. easily be. What's he doing? Uh -huh. Gary's gonna go. Stay in the car for me. Have you had a couple of drinks tonight? Yeah. You have? Okay, how long ago did you have the drinks? Um, pretty much just before I came down. Just the road. before? How many drinks did you have? Um quite a few? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do you have your license on you? No. You don't have your license on you. I literally live just down the road in the same street. Mate, it doesn't matter. Shouldn't be driving. You've I been know, drinking. I know. I know. Mate, we're going to do this. Put you under a breath test, and we we'll go from there. Oh, right? I'm, I'm, I'm a limit, and the car's unregistered too. So. Sounds looking good for you, mate. No. I'm okay. Yeah. That's okay. Just calm down. It's all good. Do you have a license, a car license? On Sydney's northern beaches, Mika's patrol has pulled over a man suspected of drink driving. It's my sister's car. I'm on my L's. You on your L's? Don't have a license. Car's unregistered. I'm on my L's and I'm drunk, so I'm On his own admission, the driver is already in trouble. Okay, what I need you to do is just blow into there until I say stop. Keep going. That's it. Ta, thanks. Let's get you to grab the white tube for me, just off there. He's blown over three times the legal limit. You're given a positive reading, is that right? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm way over the limit. You're under yeah. arrest, OK? You're coming back to Manabar Police Station? Yeah, fair enough. Let's put your hands out in front of you, please. The man is handcuffed for the ride back to the station. Okay. You haven't got anything on yourself that might hurt me or my partner? No, no, man, just... OK, I'm just touching my wrist. Just a silly drunk. He actually blew in the high range and is also unlicensed, unregistered. It's not his car and he's an L. He's a learner, so... The man's official blood alcohol reading comes in at 0.15. He's facing multiple driving charges and he's got no one to blame but himself, which he does. I was driving an unregistered car. I was heavily, heavily drinking just down the street. Complete tool for doing it. Knew I was a tool for doing it. I understand I'm a tool for doing it. Got busted. Been doing it for about two or three months. Well, I was waiting to get busted, and tonight I just got caught. Thirty kilometres away, Mitch soaks up the King's Cross nightlife. I see, I see. 
his partner, Senior Constable Troy Zizkin, has promised Mitch is in for a big night. What's she say? Oh, yuck. Yeah, first uh, night as a police officer in the cross. Apparently, it's going to get a lot busier. Uh, this is nothing at the moment, so, yeah. Um, it's already a lot of people here, so I'm sure there's going to be some trouble. It's 11pm when the first drunks begin spilling onto the King's Cross streets. Cross 11 urgent. Can I have a case truck to William Street opposite the Formula One Hotel, please? Thank you. Police on foot patrol came across an assault in progress. I need the details for uh, long here, Blakey. All right. Mate, you're under arrest for assault. Do you understand that? Yeah. All right. Moments earlier, police used a high voltage taser to subdue the man. King's Cross 11, just for your information, Ambo's uh, being caught as we speak. All right, mate, this is going to sting a little. All right. As the taser prongs are removed from the man's body, Mitch takes his first official statements from witnesses. Did you fall to the ground at all? I did. It's going in. Thank, Thank you for being there. Who yeah. says there's never a policeman around when you need yeah, one? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Thank you very much. The assaulted tourist heads back to his hostel as Mitch begins the paperwork. Well, this is the first arrest that I've actually been involved in, so, um, oh, yeah, it's interesting. Only midnight, and as everyone knows, King's Cross starts to kick off about two o'clock. So, yeah, everyone's just filling themselves up with the alcohol now, ready to start a big night, I guess. Nearby, in Sydney's CBD, Alex patrols with Senior Constable Richard Haggy. <laughs> Two alerts come through on the police radio. Alex is first code red. A man has stumbled out of a pub, straight onto the road, and collided with a taxi. Uh, saw the man flying through the air and he ended up on the sidewalk. Alex takes witness statements, the first entries in her all-important notebook. Yeah, the taxi's about probably 20 metres down the road there with his hazards on. We got an urgent double beep on the radio to respond to um, a bad car accident where a pedestrian's been struck and actually flipped over a taxi and broken both his legs. The man is oblivious to his injuries or how close he came to being killed. Got to go home. Oh, but we'll go and get checked out just in case, eh? Quickly, I want to go home. We'll go as quickly as we can, all right? At this stage, the victim's gone to RPA to get some urgent treatment. Yeah, it's all happening in Sydney tonight. 1.30 a.m. in King's Cross. More drunks spill onto the streets. Go, okay, you're going to leave, otherwise you're going to get locked up. You ever see me? Excuse me, officer. Just... Starting oh. just without him. Yep, yeah. OK, well, he's gone now, so how about you go? It's time for the boxing gloves now, so the fights are blowing everywhere. So I think alcohol's starting to kick in a bit. Mitch and his partner respond to another code red. A brawl has erupted outside a hotel. Uh, unfortunately, someone's been glassed here. Just trying to keep everyone out. Everyone's uh, got a bit of alcohol in them and wants to come in and have a look at them. Around that way. It's not long before another brawl breaks out across the road. <laughs> Probationary constable Mitch attends a brawl outside a King's Cross nightclub. Come here, buddy. I'm not doing anything. No, they A man is subdued after striking a female officer. We're off at Porky's at the moment, one under arrest. to see the young fella get into it then. Otherwise, the coppers getting flogged up here, so I've got to praise him for his efforts here. Yeah, the uh, 
adrenaline's definitely pumping. Uh, the bloke's got arrested and going back to the station for hitting an officer. 40, thanks. Sorry, it was 140. Bad boy, bad boy. <laughs> what you gonna do? What are they gonna do when Mitch comes for you? <laughs> <laughs> You certainly see the funny side of life over here sometimes. You see a lot of bad things as well. A lot of life-changing experiences are learnt up here. He's um, got a good head on his shoulders. He's, um, he's got a mature outlook and he's um, willing to learn, so I think he'll be fine. It does worry me some of the things I'm going to see out here. I'll see a lot more here than what I would in other places. But I think it will make me a better person and obviously a better police officer in the long run. Intoxicated, all right. I'm concerned for your welfare. I'm not intoxicated. Just watch your step then. Right, so at this point, you're going to be taken back to Surrey Hills Police, okay? I'm fine. Because you're intoxicated, and I have a duty of care to make sure that nothing happens to you. Watch your step. Watch your step here. I hope. I'm happy to be out there doing it. Really? I can't believe I'm here. I'm pinching myself. I'm sitting on Oxford Street with a lockup. <laughs> I think in the sack group standing up, what do you reckon? Yeah. I sound like Americans. Hey, listen up for a minute. I've had some reports of you being pretty rowdy and annoying other people. Yeah, got my boots sandy for once. Yeah. Hey, bud, do you want to grab your bottle there? Oh. It's definitely worth all the time down in Goulburn. Look where I've ended up. It's a great place to work and I wouldn't want to do anything else. <laughs> You're literally like monitoring the whole society what's going on, who's doing what, are they upholding the law, and you're the one that's got to enforce it. I've got to say it again, it's important to have a good time doing the cops. It's because it is a fun <laughs> job. But a lot of times, don't get me wrong, sometimes it's really serious, but most of the time it's really good fun. Loving the job? <laughs> it's good, it's so lame, like we're just driving around in cars and it's awesome, so, yeah. <laughs> My husband was a bit of a bad man, Clary, but I don't think he'd have done the things what she's doing. Not to me. He was very jealous in them days. I think sometimes you just got to sit there and listen to some people. Just being there, they'll, they'll feel more comfortable, so, yeah. See that boy up there? Yeah. If you had hair like him, you'd be like my son. Oh, yeah? Well, look. <laughs> Come on out. Oh, if I could choose any job in the world, I'd definitely be, uh, be a copper. So, yeah, I'm finally living my dream. To make sure that nothing happens to you. Watch your step. Watch your step here. I hope. I was happy to be out there doing it. I can't believe I'm here. I'm pinching myself. I'm sitting on Oxford Street with a lockup. <laughs> Thinking the sack group standing up, what do you reckon? Yeah. I sound like Americans. Hey, listen up for a minute. I've had some reports of you being pretty rowdy and annoying other people. Yeah, got my boots sandy for once. Yeah. Hey, bud, do you want to grab your bottle there? Oh. It's definitely worth all the time down in Goulburn. Look where I've ended up. It's a great place to work and I wouldn't want to do anything else. <laughs> You're literally like monitoring the whole society. What's going on? Who's doing what? Are they upholding the law? And you're the one that's got to enforce it. I've got to say it again, it's important to have a good time doing the cops. Yeah. It's because it is a fun <laughs> job. But a lot of times, don't get me wrong, sometimes it's really serious. But most of the time it's really good fun. Loving the job? <laughs> It's good, it's so lame, like we're just driving around in cars and it's awesome, so, yeah. <laughs> My husband was a bit of a bad man, Clary, but I don't think he'd have done the things what she's doing. Not to me, he was very jealous in them days. I think sometimes you just got to sit there and listen to some people. Just being there, they'll, they'll feel more comfortable, so, yeah. Oh. See that boy up there? Yeah. 
If you had hair like him, you'd be like my son. Oh, yeah? Well, look. <laughs> Come on out. Oh, if I could choose any job in the world, definitely be, uh, be a copper. So, yeah, I'm finally living my dream. <laughs>